All right, so oftentimes uh, we need to relate um, a linear position velocity or acceleration to its angular um, analog, the angular position, the angular velocity, or the angular acceleration. So I'm going to teach you how to do that. Um, why would we need to do this too? Well, uh, let's take something kind of complicated, maybe... Give me a second. Um, if we have some rod connected to another rod, so we'll call this A, this B, and maybe there's something like a piston right here. And we want to know how fast this is going. What's the speed of the piston? And this piston's going through some cylinder walls like this. But the only thing we know is the angular the angular velocity and the angular acceleration. Well, if we know these lengths right here and some initial conditions, uh, we can we can figure that out. And what we're doing is relating angular coordinates to um, uh, the linear coordinate. So let's take let's start with a circle, and we we've talked about some uniform circular motion already, but let's go back. Um, got a circle here and remember any any mass here's our oh, any mass that's on here we'll call this our axis of rotation um, all the points are going to move in circular paths as it rotates this direction with some possible omega some possible acceleration and uh, through some displacement theta. Well, we need to realize that that point, let's look at one point in particular, say point P. Um, if you remember, the velocity right here was always tangent. Let's use a different color. Perfectly tangent to the path. It was a right angle. So even if it wasn't a circle, it's still, the velocity is always tangent to the path. It could be something like this, that's the path, well, the velocity is tangent, 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 and so on. The acceleration, though, had a component going inwards. Um, we're not worried about that right now. Let's just relate the linear and angular variables to each other. Well, um, we can say this goes through some distance s as it goes through some angle theta and we would know the radius of that circle and from geometry we can say that that arc length is equal to r times theta this has to be in radians i'm going to say this probably 10 times um, theta must be in radians so there's one equation right there if we need to relate something's angular displacement to its linear displacement there we go um, but what if we want to take it another step further and find the speed? How fast is that going right there? Um, we could find the, the vector form, but we would have to do a little bit of geometry or actually uh, take a cross product. Um, but we're gonna, not going to go that far in here. Um, what we get, though, we can say that the time derivative of s would be equal to the time derivative of r theta. r is constant in this case. Um, but theta, we're rotating. It can change with time. So we get ds dt is equal to r d theta dt. And the change in, we've defined this, the change in uh, angular position with respect to time is what we call omega. So we get a linear velocity is equal to r times omega. All right. Um, if if omega is constant, then we can um, figure out the period of something. Let's say. Uh, how long it takes to go around one time. Um, using 
the period is equal to 2 pi, that's one full revolution, times the radius over the velocity. Those look too similar. Okay, um, if we remember that this right here, v is equal to r omega, and make this substitution, we can say that the period is equal to 2 pi over omega. So we've seen this definition before. Now we have uh, 1 with respect to omega. Um, let's take the velocity one step further and find the acceleration. If we take, we had v is equal to r omega. Let's take the whole time derivative of this. That gives me dv dt is equal to a constant radius times d omega dt. And we've defined this as alpha. So what do we get? We get the linear acceleration is equal to the radius times alpha. So uh, there's three important equations. This one, not so much. That's for special cases. But um, the fact that s is equal to r theta, v is equal to r omega, and a, the acceleration is equal to r alpha. Um, and this has to be in radians. This has to be in radians per second, and this has to be in radians per second squared. If it's in RPM, if it's in revolutions per second, it's not going to work, okay? Um, and if you wanted to know some things uh, if something's on a circular path, right? I should just draw a circle. If something's on a circular path It has a velocity like this, and let's say it's traveling at a constant speed. It is something's causing it to to turn, right? It has some acceleration in the radial direction towards the center, and we've seen this before now as uh, the speed squared over r. Well, we can actually throw in um, v is equal to omega r and get the same acceleration um, call it r and the radial direction would be equal to omega squared r and uh, both of these end up you can use the cross product if you had a vector locating the space you could say that the acceleration of that point is equal to omega crossed omega crossed r. And same thing with the velocity. Uh, you could figure out the velocity of that point taking the cross product. So you can be doing pretty complex problems in 3D space. And um, Right now we're, we're just looking at some of the more basic concepts.